Hello, everyone, and welcome to Face Turn with Candace Cordelia, a PWI Presents production. I am so excited to have you all here for what I've dubbed a very special series. You love to see them. You love to hear them talk for their wrestlers that they are managing. And of course, I'm talking about the managers of pro wrestling. Today, I have one of, in my opinion, the foremost wrestlers or wrestling managers, rather, to ever exist. But Vicky, you definitely <laughs> had some time in the ring. So maybe that flub wasn't a flub at all. <laughs> good morning, Candice. How are you? Good morning. I'm so good. You know, thank you so much, Vicky Guerrero. This is such an honor to meet you. And for me, as someone that's still learning about wrestling as I go along and have spent some time in the industry, I mean, you're one of the first persons that I saw in the ring and immediately gravitated towards your energy, your talent, and just your legacy that you have as a wrestling manager in this business. So thank you so much for what you do. And thank you for being a part of this. Oh my gosh, you're so kind. Thank you so much. I mean, wrestling is in my blood and it's been part of my family for gosh, the last 30 years. So this is uh, this is the honor to be on your show and thank you for your, your kind compliments. Oh, you're so welcome. So we're starting things off on a really nice note. <laughs> But I mean, this will come out. It, it'll eventually <laughs> come out to please you. <laughs> we got to get that excuse me by the end of this. We got to get that for our viewers. But, you know, first and foremost, you stated just a few moments ago that wrestling is in your blood. This industry, you know, you've been a part of for so long. So please, to start things off, you know, talk to us about how this all started for you in terms of being a wrestling manager in this business. Well, I mean. Just a funny story. I hated wrestling when I was growing up. I, I mean, I was a cheerleader. I was a dancer in high school and college. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't in my, on my channels of preference, you know, on TV. My brothers growing up would always watch it. So I always saw like the Von Erics on television. I thought they were gorgeous and cute and they wrestled barefoot. I'm like, gosh, that's kind of sexy. Like, that's who gravitated to me as, you know, watching wrestling on TV. I didn't sit and watch the matches. Of course, you know, it was just, uh, you know, just, you know, going by the TV and glancing and, you know, watching my brothers, you know, uh, you know, watch the television. But it was on Saturday mornings. But it wasn't until I met Eddie and it was a blind date that um, he said he was a wrestler. And still, I didn't care about wrestling because he was gorgeous and handsome. And I was just gravitating towards his looks. And um, as I started dating him, uh, we dated for four years and his family promoted wrestling in El Paso and wrestling was on 24 seven. There was a ring in the backyard. So Eddie's mom and myself would sit at the kitchen table watching Eddie train. And it was just something that I grew to love. And I, um, I learned to respect the business and I learned to appreciate it, how it fed the family and how it's just, you know, you can take the girl, you know, out of the ring, but you can't take the ring out of the girl. And so that's every day. There's not a, a moment that goes by. I don't think about something about wrestling. Mm, wow. That's so fascinating. The blind date led to eventually getting to the WWE and being a part of so many intriguing storylines, becoming, you know, a general manager and an interim general manager, having these great wrestlers that you managed, including the late Eddie Guerrero, you know, late Cool, et cetera. For you, being a manager and learning about the art of managing, how was that specifically for you in terms of the process itself? Well, you know, my first TV debut was in 2004, 2005 with Eddie when he was working against Rey Mysterio for the child custody case. And I was just um, a piece of the story, you know, Eddie brought on myself and my, and our daughters, you know, to be part of the story, just like race family was part of it. And, um, it was a little bit of taste of what it was like to be in front of the camera. And I wasn't scared of the crowd because it was something I was used to performing, you know, in high school and college, but, um, you know, to be a part of that, it was great. It was fun. I didn't want to mess up because I had to go home with Eddie and he's a perfectionist. I mean, he was, he just he was very caring and he he loved his work and i didn't want to disappoint him because last thing i want to do was go home and be pissed off at something i did wrong <laughs> but it always worked out great um and then after eddie passed away in 2005 uh wwe called me and said hey you know we know that you did some work for us you know with eddie um we know you can memorize lines we know that you know you're comfortable in front of the camera 
how about you just come back and we'll keep adding the storylines for like two or three months, you know, just to keep his memory going and help some of the wrestlers with their storylines. And then, you know, we'll see what happens from there. And I was not too, not too interested in it because I was a widow. I was raising my two girls. Life was really uncertain. Um, but I said, yeah, sure. You know, I'll do it. And two, two, three months ended up being 10 years later. And still today, you know, I, I'm still in the wrestling industry. So God has been very gracious to me. Yes. Yes. And now you are in all elite wrestling. So everything that you've learned and have done in WWE, now we're seeing it transpire in AEW and you're managing the likes of Nyla Rose. You have Marina Shafir in the mix. Talk to us about the transition in terms of working at all elite wrestling and how you've been able to use everything you've learned as a wrestling manager to help out, talents, up and coming talents, such as Nyla Rose and Marina. Yeah. Um, you know, WWE was uh, such a great role for me. I learned so much, you know, being a manager, uh, coming to AEW. Um, I wish I had more opportunity, you know, to be um, in a manager role. I, I'm very grateful for Nyla and Marina. We have a great time. We're the vicious vixens. Um, they're, they're fun to work with. Um, I, I presented ideas, you know, that I would love to, you know, manage more. I mean, this is what I do. I, I'm a manager, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm gracious for what I'm able to do now. Um, if I was asked to do more, I would love to. I, I would love to play the Cougar on AEW. Wow. There's just so many opportunities that, um, you know, you can only ask. And if it's granted, then, you know, then I, I would be happy about that. But for it, for today, I'm, I'm very blessed that I can work with two incredible ladies. Absolutely. You know, what is the relationship like between yourself and Nyla and Marina? You know, how does it, you know, when the cameras are off and you guys are kind of brainstorming and coming up with, you know, ideas or just hanging out? What's that like for you all? Well, Marina is such um, a delight. I mean, she is very, uh, she's learning the business as we go. And so she's kind of um, learning on Nyla and Rose and myself, you know, like storylines and how to build content and to film backstage. And she's so hungry for the business that it's great to have her attitude and her energy. Um, as far as Nyla Rose, I never know what I'm going to get from her every day. Um, just like when she's on Twitter, she's a Twitter queen because her, tweets are just i'm either laughing or i'm crying or she's like just come out of left field out of something that's hilarious on twitter and it's the same backstage her her attitude is uh she's very grateful for where she's at today and she's worked hard and her story is her truth and i'm i'm really honored to be by her side to represent um what she stands for and we just have a great time you know we laugh a lot and uh we're we're hungry to get into a storyline that we can uh, show our gifts and talents to the crowd. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Nyla and Marina, you know, and seeing their passion, seeing their growth. It's really something. And to have someone like you on their side, I mean, that's a huge get. It's really huge. Not everyone can get Vicky Guerrero as their manager. So <laughs> <laughs> I know they keep saying, but we have Vicky Guerrero and I'm like, but I have Nyla Rose and Marina Shafir. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't try and put myself, higher than anyone else because mm -hmm. every day is an opportunity and I'm always open to learning more. So um, when they try and put me over like that, I just kind of have to like, let's calm down. We're all together as a team and that's what it should be. You know, we should be teammates and, and to be treated equally. And that's something that I really try and show the younger, you know, generation because I am, I am older now, but I just try and show that, you know, it's teamwork and it's respecting each other in the ring. And it's about, uh, bringing each other's talents and strengths out so we can, you know, combine and make a great, uh, make a great faction. Mm, I love that you said that. And having said that, what do you think, Vicky, is one of the biggest misconceptions about wrestling managers and the job and the role and the art of doing this? I think a lot of people look at a manager as, um, not as important in the match. I think sometimes, you know, of course, in my, in my opinion, in my experience, the wrestling superstar is what everyone is there to see. If I can have a little bit of element on the side to entertain the crowd, to cheat, to interfere, um, and to highlight the wrestler in that match, that's something that, that I want the crowd to enjoy. That's something that I want the crowd to remember that um, even though we're on the floor and we're running around the ring and, you know, 
going to spots or whatever it is, it's um, we're, we're a part of that, you know, we're an extension of that entertainment for the crowd. And I, I'm gravitated towards all managers. If there's a match and there's a manager, I'm watching the manager more than what the match is going on because I'm learning. And also if I can critique and give it advice or something, that's what we're there for. We're here to share our knowledge and our experiences and give our, our input, whether they want to take it or not is, is great, you know, but we're here to, I'm here to levitate everyone else because when I'm done, then the, that next generation is going to come up and, and keep on the tradition. Mm. What's one of the biggest questions that you receive from talent, you know, who's looking to just better themselves in the ring, but also make sure if they have a manager themselves, whether it's yourself or someone else, that the relationship can stay solid and can really be elevated to a different degree. Yeah. I, you know, as being a manager, I think that we have a quite the incredible responsibility of, you know, making that match more entertaining. Our, our job is to do promos. Our job is to be at a certain spot at the right time to help that wrestler cheat or whatever the spot may be, you know, for that match. Um, I, when people say, you know, what, what can I do to, to be a manager is find a good school that's going to give you that camera work and help you find your confidence to be able to do a promo on the fly and to be able to research, you know, who you're working with and know their story and know their weaknesses. And also there's been times where I've had to help my clients, you know, if the ref says, Hey, you know, we've just got our time cut by five minutes. I have to find a way to cleverly go to every little, you know, every person in that ring, wherever they're at and say, Hey, we got cut five minutes. You know I mean? We're, we're kind of an instrument too for everyone because sometimes the wrestlers are far apart where you can't relay that information. So I'm, I, I take a lot of um, pride in the matches. Whenever I'm in there, I give a thousand percent. And whether it's three minutes or a 25 minute match, I want to be a part of it all because I love the excitement and, you know, when it, it's going on around the ring. Mm -hmm. And you stated making sure that you're working hard, especially if you're coming from the independents and, and doing what you have to do to make sure your game is solid as well as your clients. But what about those that are looking to be in the spot that you're in, Vicky, working for a major promotion? You know, for a wrestler, it, I would assume it's a bit different, obviously, in terms of being seen versus a wrestling manager. So what advice would you have for those persons that want to do what you're doing in a major promotion? Oh, well, I just, um, I think my advice would be that they have to keep working on their craft every day. And that means, um, keeping your mind open to learning from others, uh, doing your research, you know, research other managers that were uh, famous before me, you know, there was sensational Sherry and there was Bob Ean and there was, um, you know, a woman, you know, also, you know, Nancy Benoit. I mean, I have to keep, I still keep looking at other, you know, managers just to get ideas and still study. And you have to, you have to, sacrifice everything in in everything you do in your day you know what it's to eat wrestling sleep you know wake up you know you want to breathe it every day because if you're not fully 100 percent um involved in your craft then it's not going to gravitate to what what you're going to do in the ring and um i think that's something that you know when they try and compare me you know, it's taking years. I mean, I've been in it for 17 years. So this is something that um, I've, I've worked on every day. And I, and believe me, when I started in WWE, I was horrible. I mean, they gave me such great responsibility to do these promos and um, you know, people like edge and Teddy long, they taught me so much inside the ring. I mean, there was camera work and there was, you know, angles and um, Edge taught me how to be familiar with the ring in every aspect to where whatever's going on, I know exactly how far I am from the, the ropes or from, you know, where the corner of the ring is. I mean, where the cameraman is and, you know, which people are we going to, you know, uh, put our focus on, you know, in the audience. So there's so many things that I didn't know. And by me opening up my mind and, and to be uh, listening to others is how I got to, you know, do what I do today. Hmm. That's so fascinating because not a lot of people would know that or recognize that. So thank you for sharing. And one thing I want to ask is, of course, 
your famous catchphrase. You know, you've stayed in this business, <laughs> business for so long. And 2022, people, you know, as soon as they see you, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, excuse me. So, you know, you talked in the past, I've read that that catchphrase was a mistake. It wasn't something that was really planned. But now looking back and seeing how popular it still is, I mean, what are your thoughts about that? Is that something that you expect <laughs> 20 years down the line, people still shouting, excuse me, when they yeah, say you? know, um, excuse me came by a fluke in one of my promos uh, on a live raw TV. Uh, my promo, they used to be quite lengthy, you know, maybe like a page or two. And so I would give a promo maybe like around, you know, four or five in the afternoon and we go live at, you know, seven or eight. So I would get ready, get dressed, and I would just focus on my promo, memorize everything and, and kind of prepare. Well, that particular night, it changed about five or six times while I was sitting in Gorilla before we went out and they kept giving me the revisions and it was to be a completely different promo. And I was in the wheelchair at the time because I was hurt and Teddy Long was pushing me to the stage, you know, for my, um, for our appearance and um, every time it changed, I think Teddy could just read my face and I was just like devastated because it was something totally different. I wasn't prepared. And uh, Teddy Long just kind of whispered in my ear. He goes, you're going to mess this up tonight, aren't you? And I was like, yeah, you know what? Tonight's going to be the night, Teddy. Like this is going to be a good one for me. And sure enough, I had all these revisions in my mind when we went live. I didn't even know what even the bullet points were. I was so lost. And I went to the stage, said maybe the first two lines of the last revision, and I went blank. And the crowd is very smart. Our wrestling fans are incredibly intelligent when they know that something is wrong. And they guessed it. I mean, you can hear people in the front row just saying, you forgot your lines. Like, you don't belong here. And I was, like, sweating and nervous. And I wanted to have Teddy just take me back, you know, stage. And I just wanted to go home. And uh, I, they were yelling and throwing fingers at me and just horrible gestures. And I was a heel. I mean, people hated me. So that was easy for them. And uh, I just yelled, excuse me. And uh, they roared back at me and I said it again. And I just told Ted, I said, y'all are wasting my time. Take me back. And I got out of it, but nothing was produced from that, <laughs> that whole segment. except that The writer said, Hey, let's use excuse me again. And I just said, it's not going to work. I go, this is, it was a fluke. And every week we wrote in, excuse me. And that's how I started getting my entrance with the excuse me. And um, 17 years later, I've trademarked it for, uh, to, for sensory and, you know, sound and it's mine now. So I'm pretty proud of how that progress has, has carried with me. <laughs> <laughs> and look where we are now. I mean, as soon as you walk down that ramp, it's excuse me and everyone gets excited, but it's, it's awesome. It's a part of wrestling lore and wrestling history and, and, not many people can say that. So yeah, I get it everywhere. I mean, grocery stores, um, I'll be pumping my gas or I'll be uh, at the airport. You know, I just and I'll get messages in my hotel room like, excuse me, we're happy you're here. And <laughs> I, I get it. I get a kick out of it. So it's been it's been a, a lot of fun to have that connected with me. That is so cool. As we have to get that at the end of this episode, a, a one loud excuse me. I will grant that for you, Candace. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, you mentioned earlier in this interview about the hope of doing more uh, as a manager in AEW. And I have to bring up the women's division because we're starting to see a new era in the past several weeks, a new shift. We have some new faces. Well, not new to wrestling, obviously, but new to AEW like Soraya. And we have Madison Rain. You know, what are your thoughts about how things are shifting with the women's division and how you would like to see yourself doing more? I mean, are there any of the other women uh, that you personally would like to manage, perhaps? Yeah, you know, I mean, we have incredible talent at AEW. The women that Tony Khan has hired are they're a compliment, you know, to the women's division. And of course, you know, as me of who I am, I want to manage everybody. You know, there's guys at AEW that manage, you know, several people, even some of the women. And I, I want to be a part of that. But, you know, um, there's incredible women like Tony Storm, who I just I think is incredible. Um, you know, there's uh, well, of course, Soraya, you know, she's a legend in herself. Um, you know, but to have, you know, Diamante is one that I just, I think she's incredible. And Kieran, I think that 
everyone has their talents. Again, it's about talent and strength of what everyone has their special gifts. And when we can bring all that together in our division, it's an incredible visual of what AEW is about. And I wish we had more TV time. I wish we had more, you know, content that the women could be shown every night, you know, in different, you know, capacities. Um, but I think for right now, you know, we, we have the talent. Our, our locker room is strong. And it's just now what we're going to do creatively. I think everyone is eager and hungry, you know, to, to show what they have. And it's, a, it's an exciting time. And in general, you know, as far as the women's division and professional wrestling, it's we've come such a long ways. And, you know, you have like, you know, 20 years ago where, you know, women were in bra and panty matches and, you know, like pillow fights. And I saw the discouragement of women that would train all day and they would say they'd have a match and they would prepare and they were ready to, you know, go for a match and then their match would get cut. And it was heartbreaking because, you know, being a woman, you know, and, and seeing them, you know, try and have their place in the industry, um, it was it was hard, you know, to watch that. So to see how women are are being featured more, you know, in, in other promotions for main events and, you know, having time and having 20, 30 minute matches is an incredible feat for the women. And I think that's a, it's an amazing time for women in the professional wrestling. It, it surely is. And we can't wait to see how things progress, both in AEW and in wrestling overall when it comes to women's wrestling. So absolutely, I 1000% agree. Speaking of that and women's wrestling and just wrestling overall, to be quite honest, are there any talents that you specifically are watching that are up and coming, uh, whether it's wrestlers and or managers? Yeah, you know, there's um, we work with a lot of independent wrestlers because, you know, AEW offers them the opportunity to come and perform on dark or sometimes our TV. Uh, as far as the men, there's um, Mike Magnum. You know, he's on Twitter. He's the starving, uh, the starving artist. And he's an incredible talent. And then as far as the women, there's like Alex uh, Gracia and Kylan King, who I'm. I'm so proud of them because we worked together, you know, three years ago in AEW and they've grown so much. And so there's a lot of independent, you know, wrestlers that are really putting their, their place in the industry. And I I'm, I'm wishing them, you know, a lot of encouragement that they get on, you know, to promotion. Mm, I love all those names that you mentioned. 1000%. Any managers up and coming that you have your eye on or that you're watching or, or know of rather. Um, gosh, you know, uh, there's, you know, there's a, a manager who is a good friend of mine who uh, he's a celebrity hairstylist and his name is Bradley Tugel. And he's just, uh, I, I watch him all the time and, and it's hard not to watch him because he's always throwing his videos out on social <laughs> media, but he's my friend, but he is actually a wrestling fan and he gets the energy. He gets the entertainment portion of audiences. And I, I would hope that he would get signed from a promotion because I would love to banter with him. You know, even when we see each other, you know, like at the hotels or he comes to the shows, we kind of banter, you know, with each other. And I thought there's always going to be something fun there. If we ever get the opportunity, but um, I see him, you know, making quite the movement. And also another manager is Chris Silvio from NWA. Um, he's a great friend of mine and he helps me with a lot of brainstorming ideas and um, he's incredibly talented with creative and as far as like putting together matches. So I would love to see him get, uh, you know, more famous than he is already. Mm -hmm. I love everyone else that you've mentioned. Oh my gosh. They're going to be over the moon <laughs> to get those people. I'll probably hold his names on social media and on the interview. So I'll, I'll hear from <laughs> his name. Exactly. ASAP. I love that. Really cool. Really great names that you've put out there. You know, one thing that I would love to ask, I was going to save this till the end, but you know what? I, I'm going to just throw this out there. So Vicky, in your opinion, what's better? What's the better character to play a face or a heel? Oh, heel. Absolutely. <laughs> Wait, WWE tried to put me as a baby and I was mm -hmm. so bored. I was so miserable because it takes a lot of work to make a crowd love you. And, mm. um, you know, as a heel, you know, you can, every woman has their evil side, you know, to themselves. And um, you can't mess with a woman without bringing out, you know, her bad side. And I love it. I can find it a fan in the audience and find their smile. And then by the time I'm done, they will be so mad at me that I go home, 
ready to go to sleep and have a peaceful night because, you know, I got to get that man, you know, that fan pissed off at me. So it's <laughs> fun how to get the crowd to turn. And mm -hmm. I always appreciate how the fans love to hate me. So it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, a gracious gift from God that, you know, he's allowed me to have that talent and it's a heel is just, I love the heels. You can put me in any match and I will gravitate towards the heel. And it, it, even watching on TV, um, even in a, a Disney movie, I look for the villains. Like I want to see what the villain's going to do. Cause I'm on that side. I'm like, I don't care about the good guy. <laughs> It's so true. It's so fascinating. Everyone that I've interviewed and asked this question, it's the same thing. Everyone loves, you love to hate the villain. And, you know, you want the good guy to win, but still playing. If you're stepping inside a character, I don't think I've met one person yet that says, oh, yeah, I would love to play the face. I want to be the good guy. No, everyone wants to be the bad guy. So there it is. <laughs> I, I, even want, even like to, I would love to have a role like on a, a series or a murder series where I'm like the mm -hmm. mistress that comes and like hunts down the wife. Like that would be <laughs> such a cool role for me. Cause I would just, I would live that a hundred percent. Like I just give it to me. Give me the chance. <laughs> oh my goodness. You sound like me. I mean, having said all of that, I have to get into now, you know, TV and film. It sounds like that's definitely something you would love to immerse yourself in. What's the, I mean, that sounds like a dream role. Now, is there a dream actor or co-star that you would love to co-star with, whether it's television and or film? Oh my gosh. Um, I, my favorite uh, actors are um, Julia Roberts. You know, mm -hmm. I love her films. Uh, as far as like on the other side, Matthew McConaughey would be someone that I would do a rom-com with. Hey, just give me in a movie. I don't care if I'm an extra. I don't care what it is. Like, I just want to get my foot in the door. I've taken acting classes and, you know, wrestling, we're actors. I mean, we entertain, you know, in all kinds of scenarios. So um, that's my next uh, chapter in my life is to, you know, have an opportunity to be in a movie or a sitcom or a series. So that's, uh, I would love that. But yeah, it, it would, those two would be a highlight of my day. Oh, that would be so much fun. That would be great. And you're such a busy person, Vicki. You have wrestling going on, but you also, you have a bachelor's degree in healthcare administration, from what I understand. Is that something you're still immersed in while you're away from AEW at all? Um, no, right now it's, uh, I got my degree when I was leaving WWE in 2014. Mm -hmm. So um, I always wanted a plan B. I think it's important that as wrestlers, that we have something else to fall back on. And during COVID, I was getting ready to go back into the medical industry because it was the perfect industry to be working in. Um, but AEW was having me come in for guest appearances, so I didn't have to use it then. Um, but yeah, I, I love having that degree. And I, I, I want to be an example to other women in the industry that education is really important. Or if you don't have an education, at least have a trade that you can fall back on. Because just like with COVID, we all learn that everything can shut down in days. I mean everything can be taken away. So I think it's just important that we have that plan B to have in life to have those instances, you know, be ready for them. Mm -hmm. That's very smart. And it's very true. Things can happen in an instant. You're right. We saw that transpire within the past three years. And now look at where everything is. It's really come full circle in very different ways in terms of the wrestling industry and seeing where things are landing and what you're doing at AEW, you know, we're, we're so excited. We want to see you more. So we're oh, that cool. out. I want to see you more too. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we got to manifest this, Vicky. We got to yes. see you out there. Every morning I pray to God, please let me be on TV. Come on, let me do something. <laughs> yes, I think it's going to come together. I think the, the stars are aligning and things are going to shift and it will come together. So we love you here, Vicky, at PWI. And, and thank you so much. My very last question for you really is with everything in mind and seeing how everything has come advanced in your career, everything in your life. I mean, is there any other advice that you want to give to those watching that just want to enter this business, just want to do anything, whether it's managing, wrestling, booking, producing, uh, being a promoter? What would you I, tell them? Gosh, my advice would be that you have to be, I think you have to be a fan first. You have to truly love what you're watching. Um, a lot of people have the misconception that, um, they see our, our name in lights and they see our fame and, and how popular we are, but it takes a lot of sacrifice. And I think a person has to be serious to take the time to invest in, you know, these wrestling schools. If you find a good one, they're expensive. 
that if you're willing to put in that that work and and to work towards that school and to do the work and to hustle and to learn your craft and listen I think a big thing is people have to really listen and open their hearts to what is needed for them to be good. Um, that's the first step. But I think that if you, like I said, you have to just be watching videos and live and dream and sleep and everything has to be wrestling for you to be totally invested. And if you're, if you have other things that distract you, um, you know, like other careers, I think that a person has to find that one career, whether it's wrestling or whatever it is and be good at that one thing. And um, as, as a wife of a wrestler and as a, you know, as a mom, you know, you have to have your support system and you have to have a good support system that's going to support you because there's as a wrestling schedule, you miss holidays, you miss birthdays, you miss anniversaries. And, you know, I work with in incredibly gorgeous guys and there's beautiful women. I think that I have a gracious husband who supports me and he's not a wrestling fan, but he, you know, he knows I love this business and you have to have a support system that's going to support you a hundred percent. And it's going to be there for you when, when, when the time is needed. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of things that you just have to be in a good place and be ready to work. And that's something that that's the first thing you got to do before you can even think about being in a major promotion. Mm, ready to work. That is my motivation for the rest of the day. And certainly just talking with you, Vicky Guerrero, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure and a joy starting my morning off with you. And, you know, we got to end this interview with that special catchphrase. So I'm going to let you take it away. I, I think now I can say it because people are probably up around me because I'm in the hotel room. So I think that's a good time right now. Excuse me! There it is. I hope that woke everyone up or rather depending on what time of day, either way, I know you're woken up right now. So <laughs> in a very good way, but thank you so much, Vicki. Once again, it's an honor to e-meet you. I hope we can do this again and good luck and congratulations. And we can't wait to see what else transpires for you at All Elite Wrestling. Thank you. It's a pleasure being on here. Have a great day. You as well. And thank you all for watching. Of course, continue to follow Vicky Guerrero at AEW and on her social media accounts as well. Until then, we will see you next time and enjoy the wrestling.